Hi, I'm the gadget guru Andy Parr, and this is the Vogue.net. One of the greatest features of the Victory Vision is that it's a convertible. It's actually two bikes in one. By simply adding or removing the trunk, it switches between being a tour cruiser and a street cruiser. Well, now to show us how to reattach a trunk is Scott Ward from Victory of South Florida. Scott, on a difficulty scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the easiest, how difficult of a procedure is this? Uh, probably two. So this is so easy, even I could do it. Yes. Okay, let's start with what tools are we going to need? Uh, going to need a four millimeter Allen, a six millimeter Allen, a three eighths drive wrench with a 13 millimeter socket and a long, probably about a 16 inch extension. So if you don't have these tools and you do have a Victory Vision, it's worth it to go pick them up. Definitely. Yeah, because it's great. You can easily convert the bike back and forth. Okay, well, I tell you what, let's see how easy it is. Let's get started. All right, first thing we need to do is remove this access panel in front of the seat. Do that by opening the fuel compartment and the side storage. Okay. Grab the access panel in the front, lift it up. Okay, now there's four connectors under there? Yes. Okay, and it looks like it came up pretty easily. Yep. Step two is, I'm assuming we have to get rid of this seat somehow. Two four millimeter Allen screws right here in the front. Start by removing those. Now, if they happen to fall through, are they gonna fall through to the ground? You don't have to worry about it? Uh, they should. That's one, and that's two. Now, the seat's still here, so what do we do? Grab the seat in the front, pull it forward, just enough to uh, gain access to the harness connector for the heated seats. Okay, well, yeah, that makes sense because somehow the power needs to get to the seats. And the next step. We're gonna remove the license plate bracket. Okay, and that's, again, is that the same Allen? Yes, two four millimeter bolts. Okay, see, so far that doesn't look too difficult. Okay, the license plate frame is off. Where do we go from here? We're gonna start by uh, putting some painter's tape on the handles and the painted pieces. Now I gotta tell you, I looked through the manual and that step wasn't in there. No. So you, you learned this by experience? Yeah, just a little extra precaution someone showed me. The bike's very expensive, so is the paint. <laughs> I guess that makes sense, because when you place the trunk back on, I guess you don't want to accidentally scratch anything. Now that we got some protective tape on there, we're going to open the side bags. Give us a little room to pop up this panel. Okay, and that's the rear panel that's just above the rear brake light. There okay. you go. Now, you don't have to remove that all the way. It just has to be loose. Yes. Okay, now just has to have enough room to get these bottom two out. Okay, now that feller panel, when we put the trunk in, that won't be used. No. So unlike putting together a tricycle, having a part left over is not a bad thing. No, it's not. Now that we got the filler panel out of the bike uh, and we've snapped the trim piece back in, we're ready to put the trunk back on the bike. Now this seems like this is the trickiest maneuver of everything we're doing. It's not too bad. Just have to know where everything is at. Okay, now I'm noticing there's a wire up here. Would you like me to pull that through to the front for you? I'm sorry. Okay. Here's the wiring harness. Yes. So the wiring harness you keep up underneath where the seat yep. would go. I can see even from here how that matches up. Now again, this is probably a point where it's helpful to have a second person. Very helpful. I'm going to start with the top right bolt. Okay. Now that's one thing you told me about before, that you should always put that bolt in first and remove it last. Yes. Then go in in any order. You want to snug them all up before you tighten any of them. You have them pretty much hand tight and now the torque wrench comes into play. Yes. The torque wrench is used in a situation where you don't want to over tighten a bolt. And then what it does, it kind of slips and once you get it to the proper... Yep, it, this style wrench clicks. Okay. Okay, so if you don't have a torque wrench, you should get one. They're not that expensive and you want to keep it at 26 foot-pounds of torque. The next step is you insert the panel right here, then close the door. The next step is... The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the plate frame back on. Okay. To put the plate bracket back on, you have to reinstall the two four millimeter Allen bolts. You want to get them both started before you tighten them. 
Okay, I see we still have the tape there. Is that the next step? Yes, we're gonna remove the tape, make sure everything's lined up. Okay, and the tape is off. I'm holding this seat here for a reason, but I know before we put this on, there's still some loose connectors here. Yes, we need to plug the power to the trunk back in. Okay. I guess it only goes in one way, yep. and we'll snap to quick. Then you pass it down here in this little hole so it's out of the way. Nothing can happen to it. Okay, and that'll keep it out of harm's way when the seat clip comes down yep. on top of it. Okay, I'm going to hand you the seats. All right, thank you, Andy. You're welcome, Scott. Well, thing you need what to a do polite is plug the mechanic here. Okay, and now that's for your seat heater? Yes, it is. Okay, clips together. This hole in the back is what lines up with the hook. Okay. And the seat. And that should be a snug fit. It will be. Next thing you have to do is put the two four millimeter bolts back into the seat. These are actually screwing into part of the aluminum frame, so you do not want to over tighten. And all that's left is to put the panel in. Okay, to reinstall the access panel, you start with the back V section, tucking it under the seat slide it back until you see that it meets the seam in the seat fine. Then you just press it down and you can feel the rubber grommets pop in. And shut the doors and you're done. Scott, this is absolutely fantastic. Let me take a minute to thank you and the fine folks of Victory of South Florida for helping me do this demonstration. I want to thank you very much. In the meantime, I want to go through the 14-step process so that you know how to do it all by yourself at home. Step number one, remove the access panel. Step number two, remove the seat. Now this requires the removal of two four millimeter Allen screws and the washers. Step three, disconnect the wiring harness for the heated seats. Step four, remove the license plate bracket. Now this also is two four millimeter bolts. Step five, you use the painter's tape to protect your bike. The next step is opening up both saddlebacks. The next step is to remove the rear panel. Now, before you do this, because your bags are already open, you can easily grab both sides of the plastic V connector. Now, don't forget to put both sides of the V panel firmly back into place before proceeding to the next step. Step number eight, now you place the trunk back onto the bike. The next step is to insert all four bolts back into the trunk. Now, remember, the top right bolt is the first one you insert. Step 10, put your license plate back on. Step 11, remove the protective painter's tape. Step 12, reattach the wiring harness and insert the rear mount of the seat. Step 13, hand tighten both the Allen screws at the front of the seat. And the final step is reinsert the access panel in front of the seat. I think Scott gave us some great information. I'd like to take a minute to, again, thank Scott Ward of Victory of South Florida for his assistance. For TheVog.net, I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Parr.